This week we're heading back in time to find out more about the hardy, brave and strong pit ponies. It's thought the first pit ponies were sent underground in the 1750s and the last two to retire was in 1999. Although these two ponies didn't spend their whole life underground. At its peak, there were some 70,000 pit ponies. After 1913, they started to decline. By 1984, there were just 55 left. Before the 1840s, it was common practice to find young children and women working down in the mines. But due to tragic events in 1842, an act was passed banning children under 10 and women from working underground in the mines. Subsequently, this increased the use of the pit ponies. The role of a pit pony depended on its size. Ponies no bigger than 12 hands, mainly Shetlands, Welshes and Dales, worked down underground in the mines pulling tubs of coal from the coal face to the pit bottom. Larger horses were used above ground. They transported the coal and large materials such as timber for roof supports down in the mines. Working in the mines was hard and dangerous. Cramped, dark and wet conditions were where the pit ponies spent an eight hour daily shift pulling coal tubs. Deep mining pit ponies would be stabled underground. This was often because of the difficulty getting the ponies down there. Transporting the ponies down into the mine was a terrifying ordeal for them. If small enough, the ponies would go down in the miner's cage. If too big, they would be lowered down in either a sling or have their legs bound and strapped. They would go down on a cable under the miner's cage. Hard to imagine any pony being put through this ordeal. Sadly, accidents and injuries did occur. As the ponies were lowered, if they started to panic, they often knocked their heads and backs against the rock, even some falling. Once underground, the ponies would be taken to their own stable. Here they'd be looked after by the horse keeper, who made sure that they did a daily report on the ponies' conditions and the times they've worked, also making sure they were well fed, groomed and mucked out, and that the harnesses and tack was cleaned. Pit Pony's diet consisted of hay, oats, pulses and maize. Water was always freely available in their stable. The horse keeper and the miners had great bonds with the pit ponies. Miners believed that their ponies often had six cents to danger underground and often credited them for saving their lives at times. Though the ponies wore protective headgears to protect their skull and metal blinkers for their eyes, sadly accidents occurred regularly. Ponies regularly caught their feet under the sleepers and rails, wrenching their shoes off and straining ligaments and tendons. Due to the low ceilings of the mines, ponies would regularly catch their heads and backs on the rock, causing open flesh wounds which regularly got infected. As well as that, the coal dust often caused them breathing issues. Sadly, more serious injuries would occur when ponies were struck by runaway tubs or caught in explosions. Pit ponies would normally come up from the mine once a year for their annual holiday, which was normally around August, where they would have two weeks off to be allowed out at grass. In 1887, the Coal Mines Regulation Act was passed to protect horses working underground, allowing inspectors to investigate the treatment of the pit ponies. This helped to prevent injuries and a better diet and cleaner stables for them. The ponies would be examined by a vet once a year and the inspectors twice a year. Pit ponies had a tough and hard life. Incredibly, some of them worked into their 20s. These plucky, brave little ponies were generally well looked after and loved by the horse keeper and the miners. Without doubt, these ponies played a vital role in the coal mining industries for around 250 years. <laughs>